Hi everyone, I'm Chabelle, I'm a bird certified anesthesiologist assistant and this week I'm covering shadowing tips in anesthesia. I remember when I was shadowing and there's a lot of things that I would improve on to really make the experience more meaningful so I hope that by taking some of these tips people can optimize their shadowing experience. So these tips of course are for people that maybe have less of a background in surgery or anesthesia in general, trying to get the basics in terms of tips and things to look out for when they're shadowing. If you have some experience in surgery, maybe things will be redundant, but I really hope to help people that are possibly making a career change or have never gone into an OR and are trying to get a sense for what to look out for. So if you'd like to get some of the tips, keep on watching. So my first tip will be to establish boundaries with your preceptor, the person that you're shadowing for the day. Will your preceptor be the one to introduce you to the patients or will they expect you to say, hey, I'm blah, 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 and I'm shadowing blank on anesthesia today. Nice to meet you. Try to be respectful of what your preceptor is comfortable with. They're obviously doing you a favor by letting you shadow them during taking care of a patient's life. You can be present for very critical times, so just be respectful on what they expect out of you. Personally for me, I also wouldn't be touching patients. I wouldn't be doing anything because I don't want to add to any sort of liability for the preceptor. So when I was shadowing, I was very much hands off. I was a shadow. I wasn't trying to be a medical assistant or a CNA. I was trying to take in the experience and get some insight on whether this was what I wanted to do. So that is personally what I would suggest on shadowing. Next thing to do is introduce yourself to your preceptor and your attending, the anesthesiologist. You may need to introduce yourself to other people in the room depending on what the OR environment is like or what the team is like. Sometimes people do ask, hey, who are you? What are you doing here today? So, you know, introduce yourself. I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm interested in anesthesia. It'll also be nice to let your preceptor know I've shadowed 10 other places. I've shadowed 200 hours before. You may just be telling them, hey, this is actually my first day shadowing, my first time in an OR. And that could also help them optimize the experience for you because they'll know that this is someone that has a very basic understanding of what's happening here. Maybe I can help them learn more about what's happening versus someone that's been there 10 times already. They know, okay, you've seen this already. We can skip over certain basics and maybe dive deeper into some of the reasoning behind the preceptor's decision-making process. Also, I would say be ready to answer the question, what got you into the field? Just be ready to say, hey, I've been doing this for this many years, but I'm really interested in, in getting into anesthesia because of X. And you might be doing a career change and that could help your preceptor understand, again, this person will not have as much of a foundation in medicine and they might need to be walked through certain things a bit more. It is good to set a foundation on who you are, what the boundaries are going to be for the day and hopefully it'll help you learn more during the day. Next thing that I recommend is to get to know your preceptor's reasoning. So you might see your preceptor open up an IV bag and you might not think much of it but your preceptor might be seeing the pressures going down. There might be a little bit more blood on the field. They might be noticing a lot of different things while they're doing little actions that might not seem as significant to you. So if you see certain things that you have questions about, just ask, hey, why did you push this drug? Why did you change the ventilation settings? What kind of class is that drug? What's the purpose of the drug that you just pushed? There's so many things that we do in terms of anesthesia, so many details that go into our decision-making process. There's a lot of thinking going into a single action. So I feel like it doesn't hurt to ask, why did you do this? And hopefully you learn a little bit on why they did that and you might take some notes and that can help you with your interview process or maybe with your personal statement. I saw my preceptor do this, that stood out to me and that was one of the reasons why I wanna go into anesthesia. So really try to optimize your shadowing experience by asking questions on decision-making process. I also wanna say that you're in an operating room and there's a surgery happening, so don't try to be too loud. For me, I would rather stay under the radar than be on the surgeon's radar and get them upset. And maybe the surgeon might be like, they're so loud, they're really interrupting my focus and I don't want them in the room. And honestly, you have to be very respectful of the surgeon because this is their job. This is, you know, you're there to be a shadow again. I personally would not want to make myself be too noticed in the room. Obviously, ask questions to your preceptor if you have questions, but I wouldn't be too loud when I am communicating. The next thing I want to say is be conscientious of the critical times of the surgery and of the anesthesia. If you see that your preceptor is doing a lot of things, take a step back, be a shadow, and when they have settled in and they have indicated that they've settled in, 
maybe then is a good time to ask questions. Let them settle into the case. Let them take care of a patient. Let them do their job and be respectful and jump in when you feel like it's a good time, when you've read the room and you see, okay, they've been settled in for a little bit. Or maybe when they ask you, okay, do you have any questions about what I just did? In that case, step back and take some notes. I saw that they pushed this drug. I saw that they chose this airway. They chose to do an endotracheal tube. Why did they choose that? They did an LMA. They did a mask, a simple face mask. Try to take some notes, observe, and write some details down on what you saw, and hopefully they'll have a good time to catch up and teach you a little bit about their decision-making process when things are more settled. It's also nice to give them a moment to collect their thoughts, to breathe a little bit, we have these moments where we have to be very quick and our adrenaline is going, but then we'll have moments when we're settling in and it's nice to get a moment of silence and just a little moment of peace to catch your thoughts on what's happening. Another tip is to get familiar with the room. So get familiar with what's happening in the room. Who are the different people in the room? Who is the person handing the surgeon equipment? Who's the person stitching up the patient? Who is the nurse? What is their role? If you can, and if there's a good time to ask, try to get an understanding of what the different people in the room and what their roles are and responsibilities. Get an understanding of the procedure and the flow of things. Which brings me to my next tip. Are you doing general anesthesia or are you doing different types of anesthesia, which there are more anesthesia types than just general anesthesia. If you are doing general anesthesia, you most likely will see the pre-op phase where the patient is being interviewed. Then you'll see induction and pre-oxygenation, patient is being put to sleep. You may or may not see paralytic. Then you'll see maintenance where the vital signs are being maintained within certain limits. Then you're gonna see emergence. If the patient was paralyzed, you're gonna see the reversal happening and the patient going back to breathing on their own without any ventilation help. And then you're gonna see transport and handoff to the receiving RN. So that's kind of a general flow of things that you may see. If you're seeing other kinds of anesthesia, you may see a different flow. So that could be something important to write down. I saw this kind of an anesthesia type. And then later on you can YouTube or maybe Google what that means or try to get an understanding of the meaning of that anesthesia type. And I recommend doing this because then when you're shadowing or writing your personal statement, you can say, I saw all these kinds of anesthesia types. I saw different kinds of procedures and that really solidified my decision to go into anesthesia. So really optimize this experience for yourself in terms of learning, in terms of feeling out if that's what you want, if you want to go into the field and also optimizing in terms of your application process, writing notes down so that you're able to share the experience in your personal statement or during your interviews. I also recommend understanding some of the patient's history. I've had people that shadow me and it does get me a little upset when I've had people come in and you know try to do certain anesthesia procedures, but I really feel like it's important when you understand the patient. We are not just doing procedures on a mannequin. This is a person, there's a lot to consider in terms of their physiology. So try to be considerate of what's happening. This is a patient, they have medical history. Try to get an understanding about that medical history if you can and why they're here for the surgery. Is it chronic back pain? Is it a broken hip? Do they have some sort of cancer and something is being removed? Are they getting an infection cleaned out? But there's so many reasons that people go through surgery and so many reasons for anesthesia. So I feel like that could really help people understand the variety as well, understanding the patient. And I, th I think it would leave a good note with your preceptor to show that you're interested in the patient too. It helps you leave a good impression to say, what is their history? This patient is a person, so be very conscientious and considerate of that. Another thing I would say is try to get familiar with some of the monitoring that we do, some of the monitors, such as the blood pressure cuff, normal ranges for blood pressures. If you see a blood pressure goes really high and you see your preceptor treat that, maybe look at what they were treating it with. Was it an analgesic, a pain medicine, or was it something that will bring down their blood pressure? Try to keep a note of vital signs that change and maybe see if your preceptor treats them or if they decide not to. Like I said, so many things go into each action that's done. So if you can, ask them. I see that you just opened up this IV bag. What did you notice? Maybe they noticed the blood pressure has changed, the heart rate has changed and hopefully that helps you understand the process more. Hopefully that helps you understand the anesthetic decision-making process a little bit more and potentially helps you with your interviews later on when they ask you, what did you see? What stood out to you in your shadowing experience? And you say, oh, I saw my preceptor treat this blood pressure. I saw my preceptor change the ventilation settings when the saturation went down. 
I feel like if I had a student that was explaining those kind of things to me, that would stand out to me as someone on the admissions committee. I really recommend taking notes for this experience. I honestly am probably one of the people that takes the most notes in any of my classes. I've always been that person that was just writing down a million things or typing every word that one of my professors would say. So I do have a decent memory, but I know that I can't recall every single detail. Sometimes I'll just be like, wait, what were they talking? They said something about, okay, let me just go look it up. Personally, I think when I take notes, it really helps me remember the experience or recall some of the details because you might be shadowing in January, maybe your interview is in November. I personally would not be able to remember certain details and I think it helps when you're interviewing or when you're writing your personal statement to have certain details on your written down to recollect for when you're doing those things. Another important tip that I have is to thank your preceptor. Your preceptor is taking care of someone's life while they're also teaching you and so they're juggling a lot. So just show your appreciation. Maybe send in a card or bring in a card on your last day or bring a thank you note. Show your appreciation that they took the time out of their day to explain some things. Even if they didn't explain a lot of things, they let you be around while they're doing their job and taking care of someone's life. So thank them, leave a good note, leave a good impression. Get your verification form signed. You have to prove that you've shadowed. Print that out and bring it in. And again, just thank them. This is a small community. You never know if your preceptor for the day is connected to someone on the mission committee or if while you're a student, you end up rotating back at that hospital. And if you left a good note or a good impression, maybe they might be like, that was my shadowing student and they did such a good job when they were shadowing. I can't wait to see them as a student. They're welcome in my rooms. Leave a good impression with as many people as you can. Thank the anesthesiologist that was there. Thank people, be very respectful, which is one of my final tips. Be yourself, be respectful, be friendly, ask meaningful questions, things that mean something to you. Don't just ask questions to ask questions. Make this experience the best that you can can for yourself. I do not expect anyone that is shadowing to know really anything. For me, I don't expect people to have a strong background in anesthesia when they're shadowing and trying to decide if this is what they want to do. So I don't think a lot of people really expect much in terms of your knowledge base. So don't feel pressured to know a lot. Take that experience in and hopefully you get more opportunities to shadow. But really take this experience as a, a moment to reflect on whether this is what you want to do with your career and with your life. The school is very difficult. The job can be very difficult. So think about if this is what you want to get into. I think every single anesthesia team member, every single surgical member or team member, everyone in surgery and anesthesia wants people that are good representations for the field or good team members. Think about whether this is what you want to do. And if it is, I'm very happy for you that you've had hopefully a great shadowing experience. And if it's not, that's okay. There's no pressure to get into the field. Really think about whether this is what you wanna do. Now I touched on some of the hardships that I've dealt with as a New York graduate and some of the stresses because I really want people to really internalize this experience and hopefully come to a decision on whether you want to get into anesthesia or not. If you're neutral on it, or maybe you didn't have the best experience, maybe try to shadow another day and see if another day ends up being better. Sometimes for me as a student, when I was with certain preceptors, some days were so great because of the person I was with and some people were great teachers and I was like, okay, now I'm really liking this experience. And some people, they didn't go into the field to be a teacher, so maybe they don't talk through certain decisions. So I feel like if you can get more opportunities to shadow, it doesn't hurt. I think it can only help you. And you know, I really hope that you have a great shadowing experience. If you like this video, subscribe if you haven't. And of course, leave any questions or comments on things you want to see more of. All of the questions and comments have been inspiring me so much to make more videos. So I really appreciate them. And I'll catch you all next week.